a concrete block, a rubber pad, and a 3D printer. Do you know which order you should stack these in to reduce ringing on your 3D printer? I know I was surprised after this entire week of testing, so let's get right into it. So I've spent all week printing all these ringing tests on the longer LK5 Pro 3D printer because I wanted to get this thing printing fast. But a big downside to when you start printing fast, especially with a large printer. With a large printer, you get a heavier printer. And with a heavier printer, you get ringing in your prints. So I put it through this torture test in so many different configurations on different tables to see what was the best configuration to reduce ringing on your 3D printer. I knew if I could reduce ringing on this printer, large, heavy, printing very fast on kind of a torture test. It's printing straight lines and then making quick turns at high acceleration on a very shiny silk red filament. If anything's gonna be ringing, it's this. And so if we can reduce ringing in a torture test, then your regular prints should be looking great. So the basic test, <laughs> so the basic tests I've been running this week have been printing this in different configurations on different tables. This table right here is adjustable in height and thus there's a lot of wobble to it. This thing is on wheels, it rolls back and forth, so this is kind of a worst case scenario. And I also have been using the desk I set up in the closet. It is way more solidly mounted. There's, there's four different L brackets underneath and it's really wedged in there. It's quite solidly mounted. And I wanted to use these two extremes because you might be using a different type of table at home for your 3D printer. And so this can give you recommendations depending on where you have your 3D printer set up. And the test file I've been using, if anyone's been using Input Shaper on Clipper firmware, you know this test file. It's a great one to really induce some ringing because it's very much a torture test for ringing. In base mode, it prints fairly fast and doesn't use very much material. It's really good at isolating the X and Y ringing on your printer. And this last ripple feature here will let us know if we're losing dimensional accuracy because we're printing quickly. Sometimes printing quickly, it doesn't matter if you're losing dimensional accuracy, but if that matters, if you're printing things that need to fit together, that really matters, so this can be another great feature for you. And I'll link this file in the description down below. Another thing to note for anyone who has been watching my Clipper firmware videos, you might say you could just use Input Shaper to remove any frequency vibrations you're getting on your 3D printer. And that only works so far. It's best if you can start with a very solid physical system and then use software to tune out any extra harmonics you're getting. And also a lot of people don't wanna run Clipper. Marlin works great. And this is a more broad video can help anyone out there with a 3D printer get less ringing, faster prints out of your printer. And so one last thing before we get to the results, for those of you who like me doing investigative testing like this, hitting that like button down below is the best way to help me out and lets me know that you like this type of content and you want me to keep putting all the time and effort into this kind of investigative printing. So onto the testing setup I was using, I ran this G-code through the slicer at 100 millimeters per second and 1000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. I know for some printers that's not very fast, but for this printer, it's big and heavy and it gets us some good ringing and gets us some good results. The tests have been either stock, just sitting on the table, sitting with this rubber pad, sitting with a concrete block, or either combinations on top of each other. And I will try to show a close-up of some of these results. Just know it is kind of hard to get the right camera angle to the light reflecting off of these ripples to really show them. And so for printing on a wobbly table like this, in last place we had rubber on concrete. Next up we got a rubber block and then a concrete block and then second place was running it with nothing at all just printer on table. That beat either of the previous options which was kind of surprising and then the winner overall was stacking it printer concrete block and then rubber touching the table and that was kind of what I expected to be the winner overall and it was a good bit ahead of the other results. But the order of the other places really surprised me in how things turned out. Basically that means if you're printing on a wobbly surface don't buy just a concrete block or just a dampening surface surface, get both of them and stack them in that correct configuration, or just leave your printer sitting flat on there. Next, the next results are if you're printing on a very solid table. Last place was just the printer sitting on the table. Next up we had it sitting on a concrete block, and then in second place, but a very close second, was concrete on rubber, and number one was just printing on the rubber dampening surface. It was a very narrow victory there, so maybe you can compare and find which one you like better for yourself. Since my printers normally sit on a stable table, I do think from now going on, I will put them onto a rubber or some sort of 
dampening surface to isolate them from the table. I think that really helps isolate the printer from the harmonics of the table and thus the rest of the house. Whereas over here on a wobbly table, using the concrete block to add inertial mass, I think seems to help with the 3D printer oscillations. These are pretty complex mechanical systems and so I am an electrical engineer, not a mechanical engineer, so these are just what I think is happening and why they're happening. There are a few other interesting things to note about these results. Uh, one was that when printing on a wobbly table using this concrete and rubber block system, which also I should note comes out to about $7 of total material here, very cheap to set up, and that beats printing on a solid table. So you could spend a lot more money setting up a very stable solid table or spend a lot less money and setting up a rubber block, concrete block system and get better results out of it on any table you're using. In the end, I did do some fine tuning to try to see how quickly I could push this printer on concrete block on top of the rubber dampening system. And I found pushing accelerations really does induce ringing, but pushing speed on the other hand doesn't induce as much ringing. So pushing the outer wall speed from the 25 millimeters per second, which is stock, all the way up to 50 or even 75 millimeters per second didn't induce very much ringing if I left the acceleration at the stock 500 millimeters per second. When I tried pushing that acceleration, I really started getting a lot of ringing in my prints. So I think best case scenario, pushing your speeds and not your acceleration might get you your best quality out of your prints. But if quality doesn't matter to you in the end and you really just want your prints fast, push speed, push acceleration, ignore all of this. Let me know in the comments down below if you've done different testing and found different results from me, or if you found any different systems that you think should be compared against these results. I have a lot of data here sitting on the table, so if you'd be interested in more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. I know for me, I'll be putting some sort of dampening surface on my 3D printing table to isolate my printers, because it really seems like that's the best solution if your table is solid. Well, I hope this has helped you create better prints out there. Go out there, create something amazing today and I'll see you in the next video.